Hey guys, it's currently 3.33 p.m. May 16th, 2022. I'm Mark, and this is my first video on Travel Dash. Welcome to the channel. I mean, it's it's a pretty monumental day. Travel Dash is an idea I've had for a while. It's basically gonna be me expressing my experiences at national parks, natural areas, anywhere in the US that I find interesting. I find that more often than not, you like look up a video on something. What, what do I see in this state? And you just get the same generic results every time. It's always these super popular places, which by no means am I saying don't go to Grand Canyon National Park and don't go to Yellowstone National Park. But what about all these other places in Arizona and Wyoming that are amazing too? That's kind of the premise of this channel. I really want to highlight a lot of things that you may not have known existed. I'm launching this channel after the success of my original channel, Coaster Dash, which is about theme parks and roller coasters all throughout the world. My other passion is I am a roller coaster enthusiast, so that's part of what I do is I travel and uh, visit as many theme parks as I can. I have a whole channel all about that, so if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. Having experienced it before, I know how difficult it can be to start a new YouTube channel up and getting that motivation to do it. It really is a big commitment. You know, uh, with Coaster Dash, I spend a lot of time each day just nonstop editing. It really does take a lot of work, but I think right now is the time to do it because I'm about to embark on a road trip throughout the entire of California. Specifically, we are going over 3,000 miles to see every crevice of this state. I will be joined by my brother, Sean, who's flying in from Portland, Oregon here pretty soon. Some quick background is that my brother and I grew up in San Diego, California, but we never really had the opportunity to explore the state's natural wonders. Not that we were really all too interested, so that's kind of on us as well. But now that the passion has sparked quite a bit, I think it's time to finally do this. We are going to be hitting eight of the nine national parks in California, checking out the Sierra Nevada mountain range, all the things that there are to see in the deserts. We're going to be heading to the coastal area. Really, we are seeing everything, and I'm so, so excited about it. So yeah, I'm planning to do a vlog each day of the trip, and you guys are going to be coming along, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're already completely packed up. All the food that we need for the beginning of the trip is stored in a cooler, so we're set. We're about to pick up our rental vehicle for the trip here pretty soon. It's an all-wheel drive, not a super big car, not like a crazy 4x4 vehicle or anything, because I don't really think we need it for anything. But it's definitely going to do the job. The mileage isn't bad, so yeah, it should be okay. Now we're first First stop on the trip today is going to be to Anza Borrego Desert State Park, which is California's largest state park. It's located in the Colorado Desert, actually takes up a fifth of San Diego County's land area. It's pretty huge. Now some quick background, I actually visited this park with my mom earlier this year. Here's a couple photos if you'd like to see, but yeah, we basically did all the main signature attractions that you'd do here. One of them includes the Slot Canyon Trail. We're not actually doing that this time around though. Instead, Anza Borrego is simply serving as kind of a middle ground between our home base in San Diego and Joshua Tree National Park. So we're just stopping there. But because my brother's never been there, I really wanted to bring him to my favorite spot in Anza Borrego, which is Fonts Point. Some nickname it the Grand Canyon of San Diego. It's a pretty amazing place, and I really can't wait to show you guys some of the incredible badlands that you can find in Anza Borrego Desert State Park. So join me on day one of this road trip. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, here's our stash of things. Blankets, backpack, food, cooler, and we're good to go. Having been entirely packed for our road trip, all that was left to do was to get my brother from the San Diego International Airport and then drive 30 minutes north of home to pick up our rental vehicle. Look, we found Sean. Okay, so here's our vehicle. Oh, I don't want to get the license plate in. I can't do that. I forgot. It's illegal. Um, Travel Dash is supposed to be about the destination. It's not about me. The drive to Fonts Point was about an hour 45 minutes from San Diego, and we went a different route than I did last time I went to the park. It was particularly interesting to see how the landscape became progressively dry, as Anza Borrego is one of the driest, most desolate areas of the country. Upon entering the park, we were greeted with stunning views at the desert mountains and were able to appreciate it further because of a pullout on the side of the road. What I didn't expect when we got out of the car was the wind. It was so strong that it almost got to the point where it would forcefully move my body forward. At the same time, it felt amazing since we were in the hot Colorado desert. For those of you looking to visit Fonts Point, don't just navigate to the attraction using Google Maps. Instead, navigate to Fonts Point Junction, where a four-mile sand road awaits you. While the sand roads are quite rocky, you gain very little elevation, making it not as bad as it may seem on paper. Come on, baby. Sean's handling it like a badass. We're almost there to the parking lot, which is our campsite for the night. Both times I've done this drive, we've been in an all-wheel drive and it's never been a problem. However, I'd strongly advise against doing this drive in a 2x2 vehicle as that would be a heck of a lot more risky. In the summer months especially, the sand can be unpredictably deep and trust me when I say you do not want to be stuck in the scorching desert heat. Once we got to the parking area, we found that we were the only ones there, which given the fact that the sun was starting to go down wasn't much of a surprise. What was a surprise, however, is that things stayed this way all the way throughout the night and well into the morning. Because we wanted to budget this trip as much as possible, we vouched to sleep in our car most nights. Anza Borrego is basically all free camping, so parking your car just about anywhere is acceptable here. Anyways, after eating some dinner and pie for dessert, we got out to enjoy the glamorous weather. This is what we seem about to be by aliens. 
<laughs> this literally looks like an alien abduction, yeah. The temperature was perfectly cool and the wind felt great on our body. We spent the night watching a bright moon come into the sky and reflected on what we were getting ourselves into. But eventually it was time to go to bed and wake up to one of the most impressive desert landscapes in the country. One thing that's nice about sleeping in your car is that you're able to wake up naturally from the sunlight at a perfect time to get things started. So we woke ourselves up, brushed our teeth, and got our first good look at our surroundings. Then I walked Sean over to Fonz Point so he could see it for his very first time. Guys, it's 6.30 in the morning. The sun is finally illuminating those mountains. I'm about to go show Sean Fonz Point for the first time and I really can't wait for him to see it. To be honest, even after everything we saw in California, Fonts Point is one of the most impressive viewpoints in the state in my opinion. The badlands beneath you create a maze of sandy washes that get progressively smaller as you look out into the horizon. The surroundings of Fonts Point are also very impressive with huge desert mountains and a badlands environment that goes on for miles. If you have the time, I'd highly recommend walking alongside the sand roads and getting an up close view at some of the badlands around Fonts Point. Not only are they amazing to take in, but some of the plant life we saw along the way was unlike anything we had seen elsewhere. Take this one for example, as its root system is almost entirely located above the sand. We also found some unique and shiny rocks along the way that are remnants of a time when this whole area was covered in water. As a whole, Anza Borrego Desert State Park is one of the best hidden wonders California has to offer. I find it amazing that this place is so unvisited when places like Joshua Tree National Park get up to a million visitors each year. In my opinion, Anza Borrego scenery is far superior to that of Joshua Tree and in many ways comes close to that of Death Valley National Park. Those places were our next two stops on the road trip, so stay tuned for videos of California's beloved national desert parks soon. For now, I hope you all enjoyed this video and will use the information to your advantage so that you can visit the hidden gem of Fonts Point in the future. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys. Pavement. Oh, how we missed you.